Hey all, in this video, I'm going to share with you about pointers in C++. Let's consider about this code. Basically, in this code, I have defined three variables, price underscore ID, which is equivalent to seven, and it is an integer, the variable name with a value C++ as string, and a variable price with value 3.658 double. So I'm sure you're familiar with this code that we can <coughs> display the value in each of the variables. Okay, and these are the results. Right, let's consider about this example where you will found that actually I have made some changes. The first thing is about this one, the n percent. I have included n percent in this case, and then I have changed the words to address. So with this, which means that the compiler will display or will see out um, the locations, the address of all of these variables. And the output will be like this. We found that the variable price is stored here. Variable price ID is stored in this memory and then um, variable name is stored here. These are what we call address, which is referring to the address where that particular variable is stored in the RAM. So do you know where are the uh, variables stored? I already give you the tips just now. It is stored in the RAM which is random access memory. And you will learn about this uh, in the second semester or third semester. Okay, this is how a RAM look like. That is the reason why if we have more RAMs, I mean uh, the capacity of the RAM, then the computer will run faster because it can capture the value or we can store the value and then clear the cache faster. Okay, let's consider this example. Now I have three variables defined as integer, price ID, brand ID, and quality ID. So with this code, we can see out all of these three variables. But if, if we want to create a pointer, it is possible where we can um, have a temporary memory that we point to all of these three variables. Okay, so I define my pointer as P underscore ID. And in order to call this as pointer, we must include the asterisk. Okay, we must include the asterisk. And when we declare a pointer, we must assign it to an address. So in this case, my pointer assigned it to price ID address using n% symbol. This is a must, you must remember. Okay, so in my C out now, instead of um, C out price underscore ID, I see out my pointer. Where now my pointer already pointed to price ID. So in my C out, it will display the value of seven. Okay, do not forget when you have a pointer, you must have the asterisk symbols. When we assign an address to an address, we must put an ampersand symbol. So with this, we will have the same output, which is seven, nineteen, and three. Okay, compared to if you use the original variables and then you see out the original variables, you will get the results too. Same results too. And consider next example. Now I don't want to call price ID, brand ID, and quality from my C out. I can use pointer where I point it to each of the variables and then I display the results. So first I declare my pointer and again I must assign the pointer, initial pointer to one of the variable. So in this case I assign it to price underscore ID. So from my C out, this will refer to here, line three which is referred to the price ID, the answer is seven. And then next, my pointer ID assigned to the, to the brand ID. So now when I display my pointer ID, it is actually referring to this value. And next, my pointer assigned to the quality ID. So when I call for the pointer, it is actually calling this value. Okay, so with this, we will have the same results. Price ID 7, brand ID 19, and then quality ID is 3. This is how we use uh, pointers, okay? So in order to declare a pointer, it is not difficult. You have to remember that any data type, it could be string, it could be double, it could be float, it could be integer, it could be um, chart, okay? And then follow with the asterisk symbol. Don't forget about the asterisk symbol. Your variable name, any variable name, assign it to n% percent other variables. So please remember, this is a must. Huh? So this is the example that my pointer data type is integer 
and then it's referred to the address of student's ID. And string p underscore name, student's name, and my pointer double is price. Okay, they assign it to this location. All right? <clears throat> but don't do this. When you declare a pointer, I know that um, in normal variable declarations, we can declare a number of variables with assigned to one data type, which is INT. But in this case, it will confuse the compiler whether you want to declare one pointer, P underscore ID, or you want to declare two pointers, P and Q underscore ID. So the best way is to do this. Separate them if you are confirmed that you want two pointers, then please define int pointer, the first one, equal to what, and then in the second pointer, uh, assign it to what variable. So you don't have to worry um, that you can create as many pointer you want, but you have to find out the reason why, and then you can point them to, to one variables. So the particular variable value change means that your pointer value will be changed. Okay, you also can slowly point to other variables when it is needed. So it depends on uh, the usage. Okay, let's consider this example. Uh, I didn't change a lot compared to the previous example where I remove the assignment. My pointer previously uh, was assigned to the price ID address. Okay, so what will happen is uh, now I don't point it. So what will happen? If you do not point it, mean your when you uh, declare the, the pointer, you do not point to any address where this is not allowed. Okay, don't do this. And next, in some of the cases, uh, some programmers like to think of uh, when we declare a pointer, we point to null first, which is wrong. We must have a pointer where we initialize it. It must be pointed to uh, any variable. The compiler must know where is this pointer pointed to. We cannot point to null because from here, it, it sounds logic where we create a pointer, we point it to null. It means that we do not know the value. And then later on, our pointer is pointed to the price ID, then this concept is wrong. Where is the address? The question is, where is the address of your pointer? Okay, you're pointing to which, to pointing to where? So that is the question. When you do this and type it, you will found that the compiler does not accept it. Okay, don't do this. Eh? But this is correct. If you already pointed to an address of a price ID, and then later on, you don't want to point it to anywhere, you just want to release the pointer value, or assignment, then you can point it to null. Okay, pointer to null means that it is null, null. It is now um, nothing. So if you have run and compiled this code, you will get this one. Your brand ID is equal to zero. Instead of a value, you point it to null, so it means that it is zero. All right. So if you really want to use a null and you do not know where to point your pointer at the beginning of your program, you can do this. Yeah, you can do this and then you assign a null value to the pointer. So the pointer itself has its locations, has its uh, address, but it is now, it, you do not know where to point. So you put like this, okay, it's fine. But later on, before you call the pointer, you must make sure that on the pointer address, if you found that there is no pointer symbol and there is no asterisk symbol. The pointer address is assigned to either one of the variables address before you code it. Otherwise, your code will be uh, having error. Okay, so with this, uh, your program should be able to show you <clears throat> the result of 7, 19, and 3, which is similar to the previous example. Okay, now, um, in some cases, you might feel like um, why we have to put a pointer, the asterisk symbol pointer, assign it to this one. And then sometimes we can put the address equal to the uh, the uh, percent and uh, variables. Okay, for your information that for this line, which is means that our pointer p underscore id, now it is assigned with the value from quality underscore id. So for this example, our quality id is 3. So this value 3 will be assigned and stored in this pointer. But the address, address is still follow the original one, which is price id. It is pointed to the price ID address, but its value now is three after this line. Okay, but but now if I call again PID, which is the pointer address, I point it back 
to my price ID here. And then I change the price ID to 20. So what will be happened? When this happens, when I show um, the value of our pointer, you will found that it is not 3 anymore. It has been pointed to the price ID itself. And then we assigned it value for the price ID. Eh? We assigned it value for the price ID. Where now our pointer value is updated, where uh, the answer should be this one is 7, this one is 19, this one is 20. Okay, so I hope you are clear and don't for don't confuse between this. One is refer to the value or assign the value. Another one is the address, pointing to the address. And next, let us consider this. Okay, we have a pointer. Basically, we can change its value as well. Besides pointing to a variable, the particular value inside a pointer can be changed and updated anytime. In the functions, or you point it to the fun uh, uh, in the main functions, or you point it to a sub functions, and then we can always update the value. This is the examples. We have one pointer equal to pointer minus 12 plus 6. So we can apply arithmetic operations to the pointer, where if you check the codes until here, our pointer ref, uh, our pointer value should be 3. Okay, our pointer value should be 3. Now, 3 minus 12 plus 6, which is negative 3. So the new pointer ID results will be negative 3. Okay, I hope this is clear. And next, we look at the next example. If you want to change the value, it is possible also you directly assign a value to the pointer. For this example, 1000 is assigned to the pointer value. And when we display or see out the value, then we will get 1000. So which means that you can change the pointer value anytime. Okay, you don't have to worry. And we can apply elementary operations to the pointer as well. Okay, let's consider this example. Assume the following declarations. We have integer m equal to 10. And assume that the address is 20300. Next is integer n equal to 20. And then assume the address is 30304. 20304. So we have a pointer p. And it is pointed to the address of m. It is pointed to the address of m. So what is the value of p, uh, pointer p, and then so on. So let's try, before I give you the answer, let's try for two, three minutes. You post the video first, and then uh, with your answer, we compare. Well, I have assumed that you already tried it to figure out the value and whether the expression is correct or not. Let's check one by one. P is a pointer. So when you see out P itself, you are not see out the value of the pointer, but instead you will see out the value of the address. Okay, from our case is pointer is pointed to address of M, to the address of M. And the variable M is having an address 20300. That's why when you see out the pointer P, you will get this. But if you see out pointer P, asterisk with a P, is referred to the value of the pointer, where our pointer is referred to the m, m is referred to the 10. So the answer is 10. If you see out n percent n, our n is one variable, which is um, having a data type of integer with a value 20. So in this case, if you see out n percent n, you will get the address of the variable n, which is 20304. And what if you have C out P equal to N percent N. Uh, actually, you cannot. So you only can have these expressions, but you cannot C out. So when you assign P equal to N percent N, which means that you are referring to the address of the pointer, point it to the address of the N, where we set the address of N. We set the address of the pointer, sorry. Okay, then when you C out the pointer again, you will get 10 T. Because this expression has changed the pointer pointing. Okay, it is now pointing to the n variable. Okay, next is we assigned pointer value to the m. So with these expressions, pointer value, new pointer value is 20. You assign it to the m variable, so the m variable will become 20. Next is 
m equal to p address p this is invalid the p is a pointer you cannot um, assign the pointer address to a variable m and then n percent 10 is not workable it is error because 10 is not a variable it is just a value there is no temporarily a memory has been assigned to this number n percent p n percent means address address of the pointer so when you have this when you type this and see out basically it will show the address of the pointer but it is not showing over here uh, what is the address of the pointer that's the reason why it puts uh, the address of pointer p perhaps is 20308 just an assumption okay uh, the last one we have a double x equal to zero and then we have the uh, p equal to n percent x if you look at the first code and the second line of code nothing is wrong but something is wrong where our pointer p over here is assigned it as integer and you try to assign the address of this pointer uh, of this pointer p to the x but x is double x is double p is integer so they are not matched okay that's why they are not compatible and this will create an error yeah right so when we have a pointer we can use it in a function any function so consider this this is an example a simple example where we have integer price a this is normal variable with a value to a seven and then we have another variable which is price b uh, the value is 17 we created a pointer p underscore id and then it is pointed to the address of price underscore a so my pointer is now having value of seven actually it is pointed to the address to the address but it will have a value of seven and with this value i pass it to my function a pass it to my function a my function a is having a pointer price and then we update it so seven times two become 14 so my new pointer value is 14 and it will be updated over here the new value so my new pid is 14. Okay, so when you pass an array, uh, sorry, when you pass a pointer, this is how we pass it. This is how we pass the value of a pointer. Well, this is just a simple example yeah, to show we can, this is the way we can use a pointer. Okay, next. We also can do this. We have function A. I do not change this part, function A. But then here, you will found that I try to pass two variables, two values to our function A where we pass price a we pass price b actually we are passing the uh, this is what we call as parameter passing we pass the value of price a to here and then it will go to the function itself and update it okay so the new price a will be 14 the new price b will be 34 so we can do this in the main program it's variable in the function is a pointer Okay, so the output is 14 and 34. And we also have another way where we can pass it. If you have learned in uh, chapter five about functions, these are two variables. If we want to change their value, uh, yeah, change or update the value, then we can go for references passing, right? So we pass the variable A, pass the variable B, but in our function, we must make sure there is an M% percent next to it. Okay, so we can update the price and then we can retrieve the price exactly we will get the output of 14 and 34 exactly set so when you compare two programs or two programs uh, these simple programs we found that the only difference here and here for the left hand uh, coding okay we use a pointer and the right side which is here we pass by parameter and here so for some of the um, programmers they we found that uh, using the parameter passing is a uh, reference parameter uh, reference parameter passing is much more convenient than using a pointer we still can update the variable in our main program so why we must use a pointer there is no must there is no must it's up to the programmer itself how to create the program how to solve how to provide in solutions again both uh both both codes are valid all right and the difference is here a percent and then this part is um, asterisk okay but you have to take notes that when you use a pointer 
usually we allow passing null, null value, means that even though it is empty, it is empty, it's okay. It still works. Okay, and the second reason is when we deal with an array. Since we have an array, we don't want to capture the particular whole array. We just want to return or we want to update certain number of an array or, or certain index of an array. <clears throat> and then we retrieve the value to the main program, we pass it to somewhere else. Then we use pointer. Okay, instead of changing the whole variables or passing the whole variable. And if you use references, when you want to emphasize that the value or variables must be non-null. You have to make sure that the value passed to the functions must have some values inside, or the variable passed to the functions must have values inside. Okay, so I hope this is clear. So what is a pointer basically? If you refer to the theory, we have variables, we have pointer, we have arrays. So variable contains a value, array contains group of values, okay, number of um, items. But the pointer actually is specified where is that particular value stored or is located. That's why we call it as address. Okay, so usually after you have pointed a, a pointer to one variable, uh, whatever that what, what whatever happened with that particular variable, the pointer value will follow the variables because you have pointed to the same uh, because you have pointed to the variable address. So a pointer denotes the memory locations of a variables. And if you have a pointer that points to the local variables or the functions parameter, the memory locations will hold a stack memory. will hold in the stack memory. But if you call for dynamic locate memory like new or malloc, you will learn it in the next, uh, next video, where we can temporarily grab a pointer and then we can uh, delete the pointer if we don't need it to release the memory. So the data point by the pointer will be in the heap memories where we can remove it anytime we want. Okay, and the pointer itself, however, is stored in the stack memory or the free store. Okay, I hope this is clear. And next, here we go for pointers and array. Okay, let's consider about this slide. A simple program again, where we have an array. Array is item underscore prices. I didn't specify the size of the array. Okay, it is assigned as double data type with this value. So we have six values, six components inside or six items inside. And then we have declared a pointer where the pointer is pointed to the address of zero. Sorry, uh, pointed to the index of zero for our for our array. So the value would be 10.50. When we see out, it is 10.50. So this is the output. Okay. Uh, in this example, we also can do this where when we declare a pointer, we do not include the n% percent symbol. Okay, and then we do not specify the index of our array. So this is also acceptable. Where if you type this, meaning that the compiler will assume your pointer is now pointed to the array and its location is referred to the first item in the array, which is 10.50. Okay, you will get same result. Yeah? You will get same result. Price is 10.5. Okay, next example, I add on something where um, this one maintain, first line maintain, second line maintain. It is pointed to index 0 of the array, which is 10.50. And then we will see out the, the pointer value. Next, our pointer equal to pointer plus 3. Okay, think about pointer plus 3 means that we plus a value. Our original pointer is pointed to 10.50 and now it's plus 3, meaning that our Cout value is 13.5. Okay, but next line is pointer equal to, we have a pointer and then we have a parenthesis where the address of the pointer plus 3. It is not the pointer itself plus 3 anymore because we have a parenthesis to separate them. So now our pointer this pointer is referred to the address of the pointer, plus 3. The address is pointed to here or as original. Plus 3 means that jump 1, jump 2, jump 3. So now our pointer is pointed to 4.50, which is index 3 in the array item underscore prices. So when you see out this value, it is 4.50. Okay, let's check the output. Okay, 10.5, 13.5. 
So you must be um, careful when you prepare the code or when you type the code or when you, um, yeah, when you type the code. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is the example, this is the um, animation I provided. And when we go for the second line, it will point it to here, 4.50. All right. Okay, so how to display all items in an array? Usually, when we invoke array and the pointer, the pointer will be used to retrieve the value of the array, either one by one from the left to the right or from the right to the left. Okay, so usually we will use for loop and while loop when we have an array. You cannot run from that. And this is the example. Um, this code is this line of code is maintained. This line of code is maintained. I only add on the for loop where uh, we have for loop now i equal to zero, i smaller than six, and so on, built to the size. I know the size, so I fix it. And then I see out the message and the pointer value. So with this assignment, our pointer is pointed to 10.50 during the initialization. Okay, so how to move to the next value, next value up to the last? Okay, we have to plus plus the address. Okay, in this example, after we have see out the first pointer value, then the address of the pointer plus plus, meaning that plus one. So automatically it will point to here, to the second location, and then plus plus again, it will move to the third, plus plus again, it will move and move and move. So this is how we use a pointer combined with the array. You must remember, yeah? don't forget to plus plus or minus minus. Increment and decrement is important. <laughs> Right, so here is the output. If you have run the code, compile and run the code. So there are a few notes they have to take. Uh, have to take notes. There are a few things that you have to take notes. One is pointer. You don't return. We do not have to um, return a pointer from our functions. Don't write this. This um, how to say asterisk and then we have the uh, return data type. This is wrong. Huh? You don't need to return because pointer itself can be updated from the main program. So what is the point of updating it? Uh, so how, what is the point of returning it, isn't it? And as a conclusion, why we want to use pointer in C++? Pointer are in uh, importance actually for a few reasons. The first one is pointer allows sharing of values inside the variable with, with, with other variables uh, in a uniform way, meaning that we can point it to this variable. That, that particular variable changes its value, my pointer value will be changed. It follows it. Okay. The second one is pointer can be referred to the values that are located and demand on demand, which is in the uh, RAM. Okay, dynamic memory allocations. And the third one is pointer unnecessary when implementing for polymorphisms, where you will learn it in the OOP subject, which is next semester. All right, thank you very much. So in this video, we have learned about um, how to declare a pointer, how to call a pointer, how to assign a pointer uh, to a variable address, and then how we update the pointer values, how we reassign a pointer with another variables, how we use it in a function and how we relate it to the array okay thank you